Hey everybody, so it's May 13th, 2020, well it's after midnight now, so it's technically the 14th, but for me it's May 13th, and that means two years of Mr. Everything Man, yay, or at least Mr. Everything Man as we know it. Um, I tried to make a, a video like this out in the screen room last night, but um, I, I it, was, it was 27 minutes long and there wasn't really much substance to it, so I ended up just doing a live stream instead. And, um, during the live stream, <coughs> I got to, uh, get, like, a, like, look over some, some of my older videos and stuff, and that sparked the idea in my mind, what if, for, you know, the real thing that I do for the, for the two-year anniversary, because, come on, you think I'm really just going to do a live stream, um, what I can do is make sort of a list video, like a, a countdown, the top ten, uh, Mr. Everything Man videos, because that's actually a common question I get asked a lot in, in uh, Q&As and my, on my other platforms and in emails and stuff like that, is when people ask me questions. That's like, that's up there. The, literally, the two questions that I get asked nonstop are, what made you want to start your YouTube channel, and what's your favorite video of yours? I really wish people would ask, like, unique questions, like just really bizarre stuff. Um, <clears throat> But, and, and every once in a while they do, but for the most part it's the same ones. It's not their fault, because, you know, it, everyone's, everyone's a different person. But, um, but, so it's a question I had to ask a lot, so I figured, you know, instead of just typing responses over and over again, and, like, copy and pasting the answers to everybody, I'll just, I'll just make a video. Um, so, obviously, this is very timed, because it's as of May 13, 2020. I'm not retiring from YouTube. I have no intentions of slowing down. In fact, since I just like, dug deep into the, the archives of my channel, I have so much stuff that's unlisted or private that could very, that I'm very much okay with being public, so I'll, there, there's probably going to be a flood of videos coming uh, in, the next, in the next few days and a uh, week or two, so yeah, that's exciting, but here's from the first two years of Mr. Everything Man, from May 13th, 2018 to May 13th, 2020, um, here are the the top 10 uh, videos that I personally like. Now, before we get to the list, let me tell you which ones are disqualified. The Tales from the Fifth Dimension episodes, because I'm just the cameraman in those, so I, I don't think it would be fair to include those. Those are like the stories that, that other people make up. Uh, the podcast, the Cindy of the Finney podcast, as well as One Very Too Far podcast, because those are really just conversations. Um, and so, on that note, as well, the Lava Lamb Chats videos, the vlogs, and the Let's Talk videos, um, as well as, like, the channel updates and stuff like that, uh, and the vlog videos, because those are, like, you know, that's not really, that, this just, you know, you know what I mean? That'd be like me including this video, so I'm not going to include other list videos or anything like that. I'm also not going to be including any reaction videos, live streams, or gameplay videos, because... I'm not the star of the show there, you know, like, it's about the thing that's, that's being featured in the, so, for these, these are basically creative projects, um, that I've chosen, stuff that I made, and nothing really that's intended to be serious, these are mostly just light-hearted videos, um, you know, that are meant for comedy and or entertainment, uh, that I made, you know, over the course of the, of the time, um, so yeah, let's just dive right in. Let's start with the honorable mentions, because this isn't Watch Mojo. I'm not going to save the honorable mentions for between numbers one and two. I'm just going to get those out of the way right away. So for honorable mentions, I have the ABCs Are Broken, a uh, classic video that started it all. Uh, it's, it started the, uh, the, a the ABCs series, which is still ongoing. Um, <coughs> and, uh, like, you know, like I said, that one all started when I was a kid. That would be a thing I would do for some reason, I guess, because... We had so many, like, discs that we'd, like, watch movies and stuff on, and they'd always, like, freeze up and everything, because they were just really crappy quality. And so, that's what I got used to doing then when I was, like, reciting things of my own, is, is doing it with the freezing, like, when in the movie, like, I would recite, like, movies and stuff, and it'd be, like, when in the movie it started freezing, I would, I would recreate that, because I, I thought it was part of the movie, because I was, like, you know, five, six years old. So, I was just like, eh, 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 eh. and so I would, I started doing other things like that, like reciting the ABCs, and I'd do, and, um, you know, and I, I'd go, you know, to, to my, my brother and sister and say, the ABCs are broken, the ABCs are broken, you know, and so that's what I got started. Um, 
proof that forks and spoons are social constructs. That whole proof series, uh, obviously, I mean, I shouldn't need to disclaim that it's not my <laughs> actual opinions. It's just, it's sort of, it's satire, essentially. Um, but there's not one of those that I don't really like. The shoes one got really popular for some reason, so that's, that's cool. Um, but, um, my personal favorite so far is the, the forks and spoons. There is more on the way, by the way. But uh, just because, like, that one's the most elaborate and it's also a play on, you know, I mean, it, I shouldn't have to say, like, what it's satirical or figure it out for yourself. But it, 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 it does become pretty obvious at a, at a certain point, uh, you know, what it, it attempts to get across. So that's, that's pretty much, I'd say that's the most, the single most satirical video I've ever made to date. Um, I have the first two question mark videos, which is the ones with the pencil. Uh, Doodle Noodle actually made a YouTube poop from the first one called, I think, uh, Joshua Kills Lord Voldemort or something like that. Uh, that's included in the other people's videos I was in playlist on my channel. Um, so the first two uh, are great. The, they're, they're two very different videos, but I think they're equally good. Uh, the second one might be a little better than the first one. I don't know. And also the third exclamation point video. That was just completely off-the-cuff improvised banter. With Patty and I, uh, all I had in mind was just starting with the line, Did somebody say ice cream? Which is how all the exclamation point videos start. And from there, it just took off. And I still think it's just really funny. It's my personal favorite in the series. That's why I included it on here. And then we have the almost VOI stick insect and stalker videos. Uh, two very good videos. I like all, all the almost VOI videos, but video number 62 and distraction are... I don't want to say the weakest links, but they're they're good. It's just that these are even better. Uh, the stick insect one, I I still remember a lot of that stuff. It, you know, I remember a lot of other stuff we did that day. That's the only one that like made it to. I was gonna say made it to air. It's not a TV show, but that that made it on the channel. Uh, <laughs> that was actually an excerpt. That wasn't actually the full video. The full thing was like eight minutes long. That's just like apparently all uh, Joseph was able to record. So. Um, yeah, it was just me, like, yelling at the, at the stick insect in some weird made-up accent. And then, yeah, it just has a charm to it. And Stalker, I love that one because, finally, I'm not the weirdo in that video. Joseph is. It's, it starts with him in, in the bathroom stall looking over me. It's like that uh, Lil' Bits commercial from Rick and Morty in the Interdimensional Cable episode. You know, that's what it reminds me of. It's like... He takes the camera over the top of the, the bathroom stall uh, divider and into mine while I'm, like, washing my hands and stuff and then follows me. And he goes to the bushes. He's like, ah, I got a stick. Ah, I'm going to get him. You know, it's just a lot of memorable moments. It's, it's really funny to me. Uh, and then I have the My Muse video, um, which is the one with the tomato and the poem I wrote in the description. I was feeling really creative that day. So, you know, I got to, yeah, that was that was real cool. Uh, it's just, it was just random, you know, there is some symbolism in there, but for the most part, it's, it's just random. Uh, Josh Gets a Life, that uh, was a classic, not a lot of thought went into that, it's cute, I guess I could say, um, it's not, you know, it's not like as good as it could be, which is why it didn't make the, the top ten list, but I figured it's worth a shout out at least, um, Let's see, ASMR for college students only. Uh, I like the questionnaire part of that. I wish I could still have that kind of stuff memorized. I did eventually make an ASMR survey video. It's not quite the same aesthetic, but I tried at least. Um, so I like the questionnaire part of that. Uh, the hand movements aren't bad. Uh, other than that, the rest of the video, you know, it has a strong beginning. The first, like, ten minutes are good, but then it, it kind of just, I mean, the, like, the actual, like, triggers themselves are, are mediocre. I don't really have a lot of good equipment for that, and I didn't really know how to act like I did at the time. So, you know, as far as like an ASMR video, it's not very good, but for creativity, you know, it's 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 not bad. Um, and the Chris Chronicles video, uh, that one, I just, you know, it's just like a peer into the life. It's essentially the Chris equivalent of One Very Too Far podcast, you know, like it's just... I had the camera on for some reason, and uh, and it was just us hanging out. Um, <coughs> and then the uh, Hello, Greetings, and Salutations, the first two bonus episodes. 
So one of them is called Chips, and the other one is called, um, I think, like, Alternate Version, Alternate Reality, something like that. And uh, the Alternate Reality, they both get pretty, like, well, they both get pretty trippy, but especially the second one. Um, yeah, I think, like, a lot, a lot of creativity went into those. They were all on the spot. I made it up as I went along, but I just, I remember getting so into it, and I got, like, so excited when I uploaded it, because I'm like, oh, there's going to be so many fan theories about this, and so many stuff, because for me, Hello, Greetings, and Salutations, the two main influences uh, for that are the Sleep With Me podcast and Welcome to Night Vale, so for me, it's like, if those two had a baby, like, it would be something like Hello, Greetings, and Salutations, so I put a lot of thought into that kind of stuff. There's so much symbolism, and uh, like, they, they talk, like, basically everything that is said, there's, like, a deeper meaning to, and I do that on purpose, it's a state of mind that I go into, it's not scripted or anything, but I do usually have a few, like, bullet points, like, that I want to get to in it, um, and I make sure, like, I get into character, because I'm not playing myself on that, actually, uh, it may seem like it at times, but that's just part of the, the thing, I, it's a host, who has yet to be named so far, it's just the host, and uh, Figurative Frank is really the only other recurring character that makes appearances on the show. Others are referenced, but Figurative Frank's the only one that, like, actually shows up in, I believe, every episode so far. Um, and, it, you know, it, it, it goes pretty far off the rails. Um, so we'll talk more about that later. Uh, and let's see, uh, <laughs> Josh, it's very important meeting, level one POV. That, that, one, that one is pretty cool. That was fun. Uh, to make, I always intended to make a level 2 POV where it's like the animals, where it's like from halfway in between uh, what you see in level 1 and what it would look like from the character's point of view. So it would be like the indie things are like wavy a little bit, like I just put some like effects over it or something, but that, that never ended up happening. Um, but that's something that I intended to make into like a trilogy or something where it's like to you, it just looks like this character's just sitting there and doing nothing, but to them, they're in this whole other world, kind of like a psychedelic trip kind of scenario there. Um, there was one other one I wanted to mention. I forget what it was. I think it was something to do with meowing. I don't know. But, um, all right. On to the top ten list. <coughs> uh, number ten uh, is going to be ASMR Roleplay Meet Agent Earl of the IDCP. We introduce the iconic Agent Earl who... <laughs> Oh, crap, has he yet to make a return? That would just be, that would be an outrage. It's been nearly two years, and you're saying I've never brought Agent Earl back? I, I can't think of, it, it's got to be, I don't know, man. Yeah, I don't know. I No, I think he came back as, uh, I don't, I, I can't remember. Um, but I, I got to do something with Agent Earl, man. I got to make a follow-up. Jeez, I, I intended to do that, like, at least in a year but it's been two years now. It just, oh, man. But uh, that was a really solid ASMR video. I mean, as far as ASMR goes, it's it's so-so. But as far as, like, creativity goes, uh, I was really feeling it that night. And uh, I stayed up, like, extra late to make that. And um, I spent, like, two hours around it. Um, and I, I had, like, all this stuff. And it was, yeah, I, I still look back on it. And I'm like, you know what? That, that, one, that one holds up. Uh, number nine is going to be demo for something, which ended up becoming Hello Readings and Salutations. It is the double length series premiere. Uh, there's not really much else to be said about it. it. It set up a lot of stuff, and I still think it's the best episode of the series to date. Um, it's it's just really solid. I think like every second of that episode is like exactly in, like looking back on it now all this time later, exactly what I would want the first episode to be. Um, so I consider Hello, Greetings, and Salutations to be up there with the greats like Joshua's Trip and The Visit, uh, which I think are my three deepest works of art. In fact, Hello, Greetings, and Salutations might actually surpass those two. It might be the most complex ongoing series that I have. Um, so, you know, there's, there's a lot going on there. Um, but you don't have to worry about it. You could just take it to face value if you want. That's cool. I wouldn't be offended. You know, you could just, like, fall asleep to it or use it as background noise. Hey, that's the, what it's meant for, you know. It's just the fact that you can do either with it. Um, <coughs> number eight is going to be Untitled Original Song, a.k.a. Mr. Everything Man, Come On Now. I haven't 
even really settled on that as the song title, but uh, I am proud of that song still. Obviously, it's not my best work, but I do think it's my best work on YouTube uh, m musically. So far, that's that's what I meant. Like, it's not my best work musically, but on on my channel it is because uh, I, I don't upload really my music to YouTube because of various reasons. Um, but um, but yeah, that song is. Um, it, it, I mean, it's. I think it's a. It's still a good introduction to the the fictional world that most of my music takes place in. And when I say most of my music, that includes the stuff you hear in acoustic originals and electric originals. Um, you know, because that when I when I say hello Greetings and citations, it's the most complex thing I've done. That's setting aside music, because music that's a whole different ball game. I will spend like 11 months making it. I, I There's a song I'm working on right now that might actually go on this channel that I've been working on for 11 months and I still only have the first verse and the chorus. That's how, like, that's how much work goes into every every digit, every character of the, of this, of the music. There is nothing overlooked. It, it is as, as much effort as it gets. Now, that's as far as the lyrics go, but, um, the music itself, I'm not the best musician in the world, but I'm getting better. I'm getting better, so I, I do put thought into that as well. Um, but I do have uh, some very close friends who are excellent musicians, and so a lot of times I'll just hand it off to them, and, and they'll give me instrumentals and stuff like that. Um, so, yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's that. The Come On Now and Follow Me, Far Beyond Reality, that song. Uh, yeah, I think it's still still holds up. It's way better than the original rap song and 1714. Uh, I think those are the only two others I've done uh, that I've released on here so far. Um, but there is more coming, so, so be excited for that. Possibly even this month. Um, let's see. Number seven is Get Rich Quick with Steve Silverfield. That's the first one. Oh yeah, I wanted to put the newer one in honorable mentions as well. Uh, I feel like I, I could have done better with it. It had potential, the whole thing with, like, being on the toilet and, like, wiping and stuff. I think, like, that's that's pretty funny. Um, but I, I could have done better with it. Uh, the first one, though, I think is, is, is gold. Um, and I think it just adds to it how, like, the actual talking, like, just makes no sense. It's just, like, really awkward and, like, I'm not actually saying anything of value. But I just like the whole concept of, like, Steve Silverfield being, like, a pretend, like, rich millionaire. He, like, gives, like, lectures and seminars about, like, how to be rich and everything. But, like, you can clearly tell, like, is dressed like a, like, just a college student. I've got a backpack. I'm holding a pack of Scantrons in the thing <laughs> and all that. But by far the thing that makes the episode for me and that I still, I still uh, just uncontrollably burst into laughter every time I rewatch it is the bathroom. I go into the bathroom <laughs> and I go to the urinal and I, I'm peeing while I'm talking and Kyle, the, the cameraman, uh, actually <laughs> zooms in and is able to see the stream hitting the urinal so you know I wasn't faking it. I really had to pee when I make that and, and I did. It was a whole it was a whole water fountain on that one. <laughs> and like, I, I don't even acknowledge it. And then of course I, I don't wash my hands. I always wash my but the character doesn't, and um, so I stayed true to that. <laughs> he just like zooms over, like shows the sink real quick, and then goes back over. <laughs> and that's just really funny to me. Also, the sequence in the end uh, with the, where I go into the snack bar and I'm like trying to like high five people. Uh, for some reason, the cameraman sort of like freaked out during that because like I forgot he doesn't like being around like people or whatever. Um, but that was actually really funny. He cut out like eight seconds into it, but the rest of that scene, I didn't know that he stopped recording until he got outside, but the rest of that scene, like, I was, like, made, like, the, the point was I was supposed to do a bunch of weird stuff, but never stop talking about the topic and never acknowledge any of the other stuff I was doing. So I couldn't say anything to anyone else. Uh, I just had to keep talking, but I could, like, do weird stuff. Like, I climbed on top of a table at one point. Uh, I did, like, a parkour thing. You know, I did like a like a drive by turbo high five to one guy and like but none of that made it because he didn't conclude that scene. So we did the the, the conclusion then outside I just had to had to bring it to an end there. But that one that one really holds up. I, I, I think that's a great video. Um, 
Number six is the bathtub full of Cheerios, the 250 subscriber special. That was certainly not fun, but in retrospect, that's probably the closest thing I've done to like an actual YouTuber's video. Um, it, it just it, it was way more work than it needed to be, and mostly just because the jets in the bathtub didn't work, so I had to like I had to get a bucket and fill it with shower water, and it took something like 22 buckets worth. Uh, to fill the bathtub just that little amount. It wasn't even that full. Um, so that was a real pain. Because uh, I had to be there the whole time because it took like 45 seconds to fill the bucket. So that's not enough time to go do something else. I can't leave it un unattended or else it's going to just overflow all over the bathroom. So, you know, like that was a real pain. It took like an hour just to get the water into the bathtub. And then obviously the Cheerios. I didn't even plan on eating them initially. That was a last minute addition. Um, I just planned on like just getting in the bath and being like, all right, that's the video. But I decided to eat them all and that was a big mistake. That, that taste still haunts me to this day. I'm not, I'm not kidding. I'm not just saying that to be funny. Like I, I literally, that, I have not eaten um, pumpkin spice Cheerios since ever. And I'm not sure I ever will again because that, all I picture now is just soggy, disgusting. Like I don't even want to talk about it anymore. But that's, that's number six for you. Um, number five, Almost VOI, the one with the leap. Ah, uh, yes, the one that surpasses all the other Almost VOI videos. That one, I don't know why, but there's just something about it that just makes me laugh uncontrollably. Every second of it, <laughs> like, I, it's so unexpected. Like, if you, if it's your first time watching it, like, I come out of the bush in the beginning of the video, I remember recording that. I remember getting in there, and I remember pitching the idea. It's like, all right, I'm going to get in this bush. <laughs> and then you, like, you walk by and throw, like, litter, you know, like, throw the, the, the cup in there. <laughs> and then I'll get, like, super ticked off and, like, get out. And I'm, like, the troll of the bush, essentially. Like, oh, this is my bush. You know, and the funny thing is, in the opening seconds of the video, he actually passes by a garbage can and goes out of his way to pass the garbage can and throw the cup into the bush, which is why, like, among the stuff that I shout, like, while I'm facing him, it's like, there's a garbage can right there. Um, but, yeah, I just think that's funny. Like, I come out of the bush, and I was deep in there, man. Like, I got, like, thorns, and, like, I, I got, like, cut, like, through my clothes. I, like, ripped holes and everything. It wasn't fun. And I was wearing shorts, too, and a short sleeve skirt and everything. Um... <coughs> But yeah, so, um, and there are all kinds of animals and there are like snakes and stuff, but, um, but yeah, so I just come out and just immediately start running and, and like some of the stuff I yell, something about like, this is, this is where my, my grandfather had it, I, I don't know, I gotta listen back to it, but that, and then just the cut from like, the offensive to the defensive, like, he takes the leap. Oh, I got your friend from your little bush area here? Oh, oh, no, no, that's the leaf from my bush. I said something like it was his first day of school or something. I forget what, but, like, as he's putting it, like, over my head. And, like, I just, I just laugh. And I just lose it at that part every time because it's, like, I don't know. It's just inexplicably funny to me. I don't even know why or how. It just is. And, like, it just start rolling around on the ground and everything. And, you know... <laughs> And then, of course, it ends with with the toilet, because why not? Um, <coughs> but yeah, it's it's just classic. Number four, Joshua's Trip Subaqua. By the way, honorable mention is all the other Joshua's Trip videos. A lot of work went into those. Not so much the first two, but from Subaqua on. I feel like Subaqua was the most work, because that's the one that where, where like I decided to make it serialized. And so um, I made so many different versions of that. I spent about three hours around making that video. And, um, and I, I'm pretty satisfied with how it turned out. There's a lot of, like, every second of that, there's something going on. It may look random, but it's very not random, and everything has a symbolic meaning and, like, a whole deeper thing going on. Um, and we actually watched, uh, the fourth one, I think, Joshua's Trip Boredom on my live stream last night, and I kind of, like, narrated it and, like, went over, um, a lot of the stuff there, and the ritual, I think you can kind of get based on my commentary from Boredom, like, that it's a follow-up to that, and then, uh, the, the series finale, be Beyond, um, Beyond the Portal, that one is, is kind of a different animal, but it's, it's, it, it ties back to the first two more, but it goes, like, through the whole series, 
Um, it's basically like the equivalent of like Don't Hug Me, I'm Scared 6. I compare Josh's trip to Don't Hug Me, I'm Scared. The message is not the same, but like there's six installments. The first two are kind of like pretty much standalone, and then the third one like sets up for, you, you know what I mean? And it's like, and then the sixth one goes back to the first two and like ties it all together. Um, but yeah, and also the Joshua's Journey, the last of his snooping, I wanted to make a follow-up to Joshua's Journey ever since. I wanted each one to be like a different room in the house, but that, that never happened. Uh, but that one also was like setting up to be, you know, something in there. But uh, yeah, that, that, that fell through. But Subaqua is my favorite of the Joshua's Trip series. The most work went into that. Uh, it's the longest one, uh, I think. And, um, you know, yeah, a lot of work went into it. Um, <coughs> so, and then number three is the weirdest ASMR video of all time. It's not really ASMR, um, so it could just be like the weirdest video of all time, whatever, but it's it's an hour long, and it's just a series of like, a compilation of like sketches and stuff. Some of them are really weak and, and kind of cringy and timed, but uh, some of them are actually pretty good and I think still hold up to this day. Um, one of them is like, I have like a deck of Uno cards and I'm like, I'm show you how to win it at Uno every time. And I just throw the cards on the floor and, I, and then I have one left and Uno, ow! You know, like just stupid stuff like that. Um, and, uh, you know, I forget what a lot of the other ones are. There's one I was just like spitting on a chair. There's another one where I was like reading like a, like a made up thing about like ice cream. It was like a play on the adventures of Puzz and Dee or something. Um, but yeah, that's, that one's pretty cool. I think it's worth your time because it like, it moves at a pretty fast pace, so you shouldn't need to, like, fast forward or anything like that. Um, but there definitely are some, some low points or some cringy moments in it, for sure. Um, number two is The Visit. I think that video, I, I consider it pretty much a masterpiece by Mr. Everything Man standards. Um, I made a follow-up volume two. It wasn't quite as good, in my opinion, but it, I think it was still, like, way better than the average Mr. Everything Man video. Um, th but the original The Visit video, I think, like, that was a day I was feeling particularly creative, and I just went for it, and there's just so much symbolism and, and stuff. I pretty much took direct in inspiration from my favorite ASM artist and my third favorite YouTuber of all time, Ephemeral Rip. Um, it was kind of like that sort of style to make that video, and I, I just, I really like the way it turned out. All right, my number one pick is Drumroll. Student educates class and defeats Cthulhu in epic PowerPoint presentation. He reacted to this one in its entirety um, last night on the live stream. But man, this this video, I I, I mean, it, it doesn't get realer than that. That was an actual, that was like real footage of an actual presentation I made for college. Um, you know, for for the class there, it was it was their first time seeing it. Uh, it wasn't staged at all. That was literally the, the, the Raymond, the cameraman, was recording from the front row. Uh, so it's like a front row POV. But that, that's as real as it gets. There's nothing faked or misleading about that. Uh, I, just, I just love it. I just love like the absurdity of it and the whole Cthulhu thing, and especially the fight with Cthulhu at the end of the presentation with, um, before the Cthulhu thing, so like 10, 11 minutes in. Um, I just I really love it. I, it brings back memories of making it, which was a lot of fun. Um, and, you know, and rehearsing it and all that kind of stuff. All right, I'm going to, this is going to cut out any second. Um, that's the top ten list, and uh, I hope you enjoyed. I want to make other list videos um, in the future, mainly music stuff, because I have so much, like, meaningless music trivia stuff about bands I like and about, you know, songs and stuff like that. I feel like some of you may enjoy that, but I don't want to turn this into Watch Mojo. So, um, anyway, that's the video. Two years on Mr. Everything Man. Here's to the next two years, everybody. Leave comments on the kind of stuff you want to see me do in the future. Look forward to a rush of content. Yeah, good night.